It's been about a year since I installed the six Tesla Powerwalls that I got. And I wanted to go over what it's been like living with these Tesla Powerwalls over the past year, why I got them, did I make a mistake on getting them? Did I did I lose money? Or did I gain a benefit by adding this to my already existing solar system? Let's talk about it. My installation has six Tesla Powerwall 2 Plus batteries. Each battery can hold 13.5 kilowatt hours of energy, and that's stackable. So I have a total of 81,000 kilowatt hours of energy. Each Powerwall can run a continuous load of five kilowatt hours, and that's stackable as well. So by having six at any one time, I can run a continuous load of 30 kilowatt hours of energy at a time. You can, it will also surge up to seven kilowatt hours, but to just run a continuous load, it's gonna be 30 kilowatt hours. Next, I wanna talk about my solar panel system. The solar panel system and the power wall system is really where the magic of load shifting and manipulating power really lies so that it gives you a huge benefit. My solar panel system currently is about a 15 kilowatt hour system. Started back in 2010 with, you know, around 40 panels and then added a few more panels. And then later on over the past 13 years, added more panels. Currently I'm sitting at 70 solar panels that make up the 15 kilowatt hour system that I have. Another part of my setup is that I have two Tesla Model S cars, and those cars have a pretty large battery system in them, over 80 kilowatt hours. And so what happens is that I don't charge the cars from the batteries because again, those six batteries combined have 81 kilowatt hours of storage. That could only charge one car fully from zero, leaving no power to be used by the rest of the house or even the other car. So what I do is I use my rate plan and, and the, the plan that I have is a time of use plan in which starting at midnight every night, power is much cheaper than what it is later on in the day and even at peak times between 4 and 9 p.m. So starting at midnight every night, I charge my cars, I charge my Tesla power walls, and then around, what is it, around 7 p.m a.m. when the sun comes up, my house starts producing solar. And that solar is used to, again, charge the power walls, but also sell the extra solar back to the grid at peak prices. And what this does is it offsets the price of all the power that I used or purchased between midnight and 6 a.m. So with my setup, I am always a buyer between midnight and 6 a.m. during the week and midnight to 2 p.m. on weekends and holidays. Again, because it's the cheapest rate. And I am always a seller of power between uh, 2 p.m. or between 6 a.m. and midnight every day. And this just happens automatically with the Tesla Powerwall after you set it up. I briefly touched on my pricing plan earlier, but I wanted to go over that in a little bit more of a detail because I think this really helps to solidify whether or not a Tesla Powerwall system works for you or not. Now I am again in California, I'm on a time of use plan and we have two separate uh, prices that happen during the year. There, is, there are winter prices and then there are summer prices. And those effective dates on when, when they happen is laid out by the power company. On each one of the summer and winter pricing plans, it's broken up into a time of use, three different times. We've got super off peak, off peak, and peak. The super off peak is gonna be really the cheaper time. And the winner, as you can see right here, the winner is showing that it is 14.5 cents per kilowatt hour. And the times that that happens, again, if we think back to when I was talking about charging the power walls and the cars from midnight to 6 a.m., Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends and holidays, 
midnight up to 2 p.m. Then off-peak kicks in at 6 a.m. And you see that is a huge jump from 14.5 cents to 44.8 cents. Again, this is about the time that the solar comes on and I am selling solar back to the grid at this price. And then around 4 p.m., the peak time comes into play, 51.1 cents. The summer is what is heartbreaking. If I did not have solar and I did not have the power walls, I mean, the prices of power is just over the moon. Here we can see that, again, super off-peak around 15 cents. It's at 15.4 cents. Off-peak, it jumps up to 48.1 cents. But the peak, starting at 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., that's the peak time when a lot of people is using power, 81.6 cents per kilowatt hour. That is insane. So if you had a solar system only that you were using during the day, you're going to lose all of that extra solar that you were selling back to the grid at 48.1 cents when that 81.6 kicks in at 4 p.m. And the sun starts to go around, or I really stop producing power from solar between 5 and 6.30. So I am a large consumer of power if I didn't have the power walls during the, the peak time, if I had solar only. So this just helps to bring into um, focus really my decision-making process whenever I decided to add Tesla Powerwalls to my already existing solar setup. The magic to the Tesla Powerwalls and the solar is something called peak shaving. I want to go over that real quick. What peak shaving is and, and then get into how you can use it to benefit your electric bill every month. With peak shaving, you are going to be charging your batteries when your electricity rates are at their lowest. So for me, it's going to be super off peak and with solar. And what you're going to do then is that you are going to discharge energy with those batteries when electricity is much more expensive during the day. And basically that's what peak shaving is. Now I want to go over the cost of the Tesla power walls, the solar system, the entire setup, how long it took to ROI, or am I still trying to ROI? And if it made sense or did I make a mistake doing any of this? There are incentives when it comes to solar and Tesla power walls that you can take advantage of. And that's something that I did. So what it did is it helped to offset that total cost. For example, the Tesla power walls cost around $80,000 for six of them to be installed in your home. However, after incentives, it was knocked down to around 56,000. So that it's a huge incentive that you can take advantage of out there when it comes to solar and power walls. So to kind of go over everything, what I did is I put together this simple little spreadsheet to show what my power bill would have been sent from 2010 until 2021. I then took the solar panel cost, total 70 solar panels, the six Tesla power walls after incentives, because I did take advantage of those. My total cost for the system, $111,320. Then what I did is I took what my, and I'm guessing here, what my power bill would have been over all those years, because it was around $1,000 back in 2010. Who knows with the power increase cost how much those power bill would have been without this going forward. So I subtracted what those power bills would have been $129,600 subtracted those. And as of 2021, and I didn't get the, the power walls until last year. Uh, at the end of 2021, after the solar panels, after the cost of the power walls, I am still, I am negative $18,280. So I've still saved after the cost of power walls and solar, another $18,280 at the end of 2021 is 2023. So that amount is continuing to pile up. So I'm, I'm still continuing to receive that benefit. 
there is one other advantage that I haven't talked about that the power walls provide, and that's if there is a grid outage, power outage, your stored power in your power walls can continue to operate your home like normal. Or if you don't have enough stored power to run the entire home, then you can just run important things like your refrigerator. It's, it's something that provides a convenience and a safety that is hard to measure. So in sum, was it worth me adding six Tesla power walls to my system or was it a mistake? It was absolutely worth it. The money that I've saved, the money that I will continue to save, the safety of always having power if there is a grid outage, the convenience of always having power if there is a, a grid outage. It, it's just so worth it, especially for me here in California with the price of electricity continuing to go up. If getting power walls is something that you've considered getting, let me know if my setup or something like my setup would work for your situation. If it wouldn't, what would you do differently? What would you change? Let me know in the comments below. I hope this video has helped to help you in making that decision and whether or not solar or Tesla Powerwalls is something you want to add to your home. Thanks for watching.